In this demonstration, I'll explain to you how we can create a brand new list through our SPFX web part. So for this, let me create a new folder, something like say list creation demo, and then switch to that folder and then run the human utility. So just like how we did in the last example, we created a brand new website, but this time we are basically planning to create a new list through code. So it's going to be a web part and the web part name can be new list creation web part and leave the description and it's going to be no JavaScript framework. So just like the previous example of site creation, as soon as the project gets created, we will be taking the required modules into our import section and also we will be creating the basic user interface inside the render function using HTML controls and then we will be having a button so whatever values user enters into the text boxes we will use those names for creating the list and it's going to be a generic list in fact when you are practicing you might even change it to a different list like contacts just based on the list template type code okay the project has been created successfully so let's open this in the visual studio code and the first thing that I'm going to do in my web part, first I'm going to have this important import statement. So wherein we are trying to import the SPHTTP client and then the SPHTTP client response as well as the ISPHTTP client options from Microsoft slash SPHTTP. This line is pretty similar to our previous example. And then inside my render function, I will just remove all the unwanted statements for this demonstration. We just have one div tag. And notice everything has been put in these special codes. So here I'll be first creating the HTML user interface. So the code for UI creation looks like this. We just have one heading three with a couple of breaks. Maybe when you are practicing, you might as well take all these things into some proper tables, TR and TDs. So first we are asking the user to enter the list name. And also we are asking the user to enter some list description. So these are the different IDs we have for these two text boxes. And also I have a button whose ID is btn create new list with the caption of create a new list. So all this is thing, all this thing is done inside this div tag so after the ui is created we have to attach a click event handler for this button so that's the reason i'm going to call a function called as bind events so let's see the implementation for bind events now so the code looks like this for the bind event so wherein we are simply trying to say hash btn create new list dot add event listener we are attaching a click event and this is going to be the function that gets called upon clicking this button. Now that all the important functionality, we will be doing it inside this create new list function, uh, which I will be implementing it here. Now let's see the implementation for the create new list method, which I've just pasted right after the bind events function. So most of the steps are pretty similar to the previous example. So first I'm trying to grab whatever values user has entered into those two text boxes for the list name as well as for the list description into some variables and also we got ready with another constant like list url whose name can be anything of your choice so where you have to basically build the url so i'm going to say my page context dot web dot absolute url under api web lists first i'm trying to call this get by title and then followed by the list name. So before we create the list, we want to verify if there is a list already with that name, then we just show a message to the user, this list already does exist, and then they will enter a new list name, and then they will proceed. So that's the purpose of first verifying whether the list does exist or not. So that is why we're going to have a get request to verify whether it does exist or not. If, do, if it doesn't exist, then we will make a post request to create a, new, create a new list. So the first statement is obviously making a get request. 
So I'm saying this dot context dot sphttp client dot get and get expects a couple of parameters. First one is the URL, which is this one. And then the second is obviously your configuration start v1. So in this case, because it's a get request, there's no body here right now. So that's why right after passing these two parameters, we are looking for the response. So if all goes well, the response comes to this object of the SP HTTP client response. And here I'm going to verify if the response status is 200. That means it found the list. So then I can display a message to the user. The list already do does exist with this name. And then we come out of the program. If the status is not 200, if it is 404, that means not found. So then we are very clear that there is no list with that name. So we can basically go ahead and try to make a post request to create a brand new list. So again, I'm trying to construct my URL, absolute URL plus API slash web dot list. So that's going to be our constant. So when you are making a post request, obviously there should be something as a definition that should go along with the URL. So that's why I'm just trying to create another constant called as list definition, any type. And then this object is going to contain a bunch of reserved properties like the title. Okay, the title is going to be new list name. Description is going to be new list description. And also we are trying to say allow content types as true, false, that's as per your requirement. In the base template, I'm giving it as 100, which is per custom list. In case if you want this to be based on contacts content type, then you may change this to 105. And then content types enable true false you can specify. So this is what we had inside the list definition. And now what we have to do is to create an object for the ISP HTTP client options. So where the body is going to be JSON dot stringify of this list definition. In the last example, while I'm creating a brand new site, I was basically having all this code inside this body as parameters. But you can try this way as well. All the parameters, you may as well have it in a separate object. And then you can call the json.stringify method to have a proper JSON object and give it to the body. Finally, we're going to call the post request. So I'm saying context.sphttpclient.post and then this is going to be the URL, api slash web.lists of the current website where we are going to host our web path. And the second parameter is, okay, configuration start v1. And finally, this sphttp client options we are passing as a third parameter. So once the request gets submitted successfully, we get some kind of response in the form of sphttp client response. And if that response status is 201, means created, that is the HTTP status code for created. So then we go to put a message to the user, the list has been created successfully. If there is something goes wrong, we may as well have some kind of alert. And that is how this entire piece of this block has been closed. And this else is obviously for this one. If the response status is not even 404, but if it is something else, that means uh, it should be either existing or not existing. For any reason, if you get a different uh, status code other than 200 or 404, even then we are trying to display the message. Perfect. So at this point of time, our implementation has been done successfully. So let's save this and go back to the node.js command prompt and uh, build your solution and then we'll try to use gulp sir okay we just had one warning no errors that's very important to figure out here and then i'm going to say gulp sir again we're going to test this on the sharepoint online workbench so this is a local workbench which i will leave i will go back here and then i'll try to access my workbench on the shape mount online. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to add this web part here. So I'm going to say add a web part and the web part name is going to be new list creation web part. 
yes you can put some new list name here i'm going to call it as uh, my sample list and then my sample list description and finally i click on create new list so now it tells me the list has been created successfully but what if, if I try to click on create new list one more time, then it tells me a list already does ex exist with this name. Perfect. So now to verify that list, let's go back to your root site collection. And yes, obviously if I can, I can see here my sample list here. And it is just a custom list. Uh, it's because we gave these base template type as 100. Yeah, if I would have given it as um, 105, you will see some kind of contacts list. Okay, let's change this to 105, for example. And um, we'll go back to our site. And try to access the workbench one more time. I'm pretty sure the Gulp is keeping an eye on the changes that we are making to our code. So... Uh, it has refreshed that change so we should be able to test this functionality now so i can just refresh my page and uh, let's say i'm going to call this time as uh, my friends list and then i click on create a new list so the list has been created successfully so let's go back to the root of the site collection and access the my friends list and that has got all those site columns as part of the contacts content type so that is how in this demonstration i've shown you how we can create a brand new list by submitting the post request we have also seen the get request in this demonstration because we want to first verify whether the list with that name does already exist or not if it does exist we simply come out of the functionality if it doesn't exist, then we're going to make a post request.